I'd like to thank His Excellency Rear Admiral Kevin Scarce for the opening of the 53rd Parliament and for his speech regarding the future of our state. Both the Governor and Mrs Scarce have provided a great service to the people of South Australia. Many, myself included, will miss them both when their term ends in August this year. They have both shown such compassion and love for the people of South Australia, and for that I thank them both. I would also like to express my concern and send my best wishes to Dr Bob Such and his family. I wish him a speedy recovery. This place is not the same without him. And what are we going to do on Thursdays without all of his motions and private members' bills? I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate our leader, Stephen Marshall, for attaining 53% of the South Australian vote. It is unfortunate that once again, despite gaining more than 92,000 extra votes than Labor, we still remain in opposition against the wishes of the people of South Australia. Labor put immense resources into regaining the seat of Adelaide, or attempting to regain the seat of Adelaide, and although I had a tough battle in my electorate, I was able to improve my vote at every one of my 12 booths, with my first preference increasing by 4.7 per cent overall. Being elected once again to represent the people of Adelaide in Parliament as their member and to represent this great city is truly a great honour. The Adelaide electorate comprises a diverse and dynamic group of people, including 41.1 per cent of residents being born overseas. 4.9 per cent are from China, 4.6 per cent from England, 3.2 per cent from India, 2.9 per cent from Malaysia and 1.4 per cent from Italy. After English, the top three languages spoken at home are Mandarin, Greek and Italian. The electorate has 15,080 volunteers, and on a side note, last week was National Volunteers Week. I would like to congratulate and thank all of our volunteers who form such a vital part of our community. I was proud to attend various functions and events in recognition of volunteers again this year, and am extremely happy to play a role in representing their interests as now the Parliamentary Secretary to the Shadow Minister for Volunteers. As part of my regular volunteer work with various organisations, including the Lions and Meals on Wheels, last year I successfully worked with other service clubs in Prospect, including the Lions, Rotary and Kiwanis, to establish a Prospect branch of Operation Flinders. This gave students from two local high schools an opportunity to turn their lives around. I'm very pleased to be part of the fundraising efforts again this year, this is a very worthwhile cause and one that I'm tremendously proud to support. In my maiden speech, I supported Rundle Mall becoming a designated tourist precinct under the Shop Trading Hours Act, like Jetty Road Glenelg was at the time. My speech recognised Rundle Mall as one of our key tourist destinations that would greatly benefit from opening on a number of our state's 11 public holidays. Although my private member's bill to achieve this was rejected by the Labor Party in the lower house, Labor soon after passed a bill of their own to open Rundle Mall on public holidays, achieving the same result. I thank them for following my lead and note the huge success and sales results that Rundle Mall has achieved since this change. I, however, condemn the government for also introducing two extra part-day holidays on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve as part of their bill in what was described as, quote, a pig of a deal. This not only exacerbates the fact that we are the most expensive state to do business, but also in their effort to create a vibrant city, they have forced many businesses to shut down on what should be two of the busiest days of the year. In addition to this, people in this state are struggling on all fronts. Our state continues to lose our highly educated young people to other states due to a lack of jobs and career progression here. Whilst small bars add some vibrancy to the city, it's jobs that we really need. Where are the 100,000 extra jobs that Labor promised? 27,000 jobs were lost last year in an eight-month period. What is the government doing for these South Australians? There has been a lot of media and government attention, and rightly so, for the Holden workers who will be losing their jobs in three years. However, they have three years' notice to retrain and reorganise their lives and have the support of both state and federal governments. This is great, but what are Labor doing for the businesses that are failing? The people who are not only using, losing their jobs, but their houses and every cent they have. Those taking great risks to try and build a better South Australia, trying to give people jobs and provide a future for themselves. 
Where are the government's policies to help them? Work cover is a mess and is charging double that of most other states. We have high payroll taxes, high land taxes, which increase the cost of commercial leasing, high costs of electricity, high costs of water, high costs of council rates, along with endless red tape to get anything done. Basically, Labor is making it as difficult as possible to carry on doing business in this state. And now, adding salt to their wounds, city businesses will be lumped with an extra car parking tax on top of their already high costs. Apparently, we want more vibrancy as long as you don't try and drive into the city. How can the government expect to tax people who drive into the city when their next best option is public, that public transport fails them miserably? In 2012-13 year, there were 5.5 million less boardings on public transport compared to the 09-10 financial year. Surely it is much more logical to fix our public transport system before we tax people. If we had a transport system that was reliable, affordable, safe, clean and efficient, there would not be a need for a car parking tax. I believe people would be more than willing to catch public transport if that was the case. An efficient system would increase revenues and decrease the number of cars travelling to the city, thus eliminating the need for a car parking tax. As a former business owner for over 18 and a half years, I, like all business owners, am well aware of hard work, deadlines, pressure, adapting, budgets, getting results and taking responsibility. Small business is a major employer in South Australia with 148,277 registered businesses statewide, including 15,180 in the Adelaide CBD. Currently, too many government contracts are awarded to interstate companies over our own local businesses, taking profits and jobs out of South Australia and damaging our businesses. South Australian businesses cannot compete on an equal playing field when they operate in a state with the highest business-related costs. Things must change in order for our state to prosper. Labor needs to adopt some of the liberal policies that support business, such as reducing payroll tax, halving the cost of the work cover levy to bring us into line with other states, abolishing the car parking tax and convincing their Labor federal colleagues to abolish the carbon tax to reduce the cost of electricity. I will continue to use my business experience and knowledge to assist others in business and will support legislation to improve business conditions and cut red tape. In addition to my passion for supporting local businesses, I've always had a particular interest in youth, including education, health, safety and self-esteem. I'm thrilled to now be the Parliamentary Secretary to the Shadow Minister for Youth, as well as for Families and Child Protection. This means that I can now further in be involved in making positive changes for our state's young, who are tomorrow's leaders. Through my former businesses, Rachel's Model Management and Training and Rachel's Junior Models, I have met with, interviewed, taught and worked with thousands of young people. From this, I believe that good role models, encouragement and self-belief are important basics to the well-being and future of our young. I personally believe that many problems such as binge drinking, drug use and eating disorders are a result of poor self-esteem. Since entering Parliament in 2010, I've been keeping abreast of juvenile justice issues. I believe there is much work that can be done in this area to ensure our youth have the best chance at a great life. Our city needs reinvigoration in order to provide employment opportunities and to give our youth a reason to stay in our state. We lose too many of our finest, young and capable minds to the eastern states. Many people leave our more people leave our city each year than are born here. Immigration is the only reason that our state's population has increased. I want to engage with our young and work with them to find out how we can make our city more livable for them. A good education is a high priority of mine and something my mother instilled in me from an early age. While door knocking during my first campaign prior to the 2010 election, I identified a strong demand for a second campus of Adelaide High School for the people of Prospect and Walkerville Council areas. This demand still remains today as parents worry about their child's educational future. The Adelaide electorate contains a total of 17 primary schools, six of which are public and 11 that are private. 
Of the 12 secondary schools in the electorate, only one is public and until recently was not zoned for any suburbs further north than North Adelaide. The Adelaide electorate has the highest percentage of families choosing non-government education for their children for secondary schooling, with 75%, sorry, 74 per cent of children attending private schools for their secondary school years, compared to the figure of 43 per cent statewide. I believe this high figure is attributed to the lack of adequate public high school options in the area. Prior to the 2010 election, Labor announced plans to expand Adelaide High School by 250 students by 2013. This was a desperate attempt to protect votes in Adelaide after ignoring parents for eight years at that time. We now find that only 50 extra students will enter Adelaide High School starting in year eight by 2015, thus taking 2000, until 2019 to achieve their 2010 promise of 250 extra places, some six years later than promised. I hope their proposed City High School on the old RA site due in 2019 will be delivered on time. It is not often that from opposition a backbencher can force a government to deliver an opposition policy funded to $85 million to build a second high school for their residents. I am pleased to have achieved this and look forward to seeing the government's plans for the school. Safety is another as aspect that resonates with many people I represent. There are a high percentage of single people living alone in, in the Adelaide electorate, along with a high percentage of university students. There have been six sexual attacks, assaults on women in North Adelaide, there's been bikey shootings and alcohol fueled violence issues in my electorate. Given this knowledge, I was shocked to discover that the newly built Adelaide Oval and Surrounds has 300 CCTV cameras. There are none in North Adelaide and only 71 CCTV cameras that are surveillance by SA Police in the city area, despite the constant claims of alcohol fueled violence in the city. Last year, I successfully lobbied the federal Liberal government for $255,000 in funding for CCTV cameras and other safety measures for North Adelaide, and I'm pleased to announce that they were included in the budget and that money will be forthcoming soon. I have also challenged the government's plans to sell the Women's and Children's Hospital car park and have advocated for expanded parking facilities for the safety and convenience of staff, patients and visitors to the hospital. This is a serious and ongoing issue for North Adelaide that is highlighted by the assaults in the area. I believe that providing health care also involves providing access to the service. Expanded parking will also be beneficial for Adelaide Oval patrons and local residents who struggle to find parking near their homes. I'm a strong advocate and supporter of local existing neighbourhood watch groups and have strongly encouraged and supported new groups that have formed. From a safety point of view, these groups are an excellent way of informing residents on keeping safe, identifying potential trouble spots and problems, as well as engaging with the community. In terms of what is happening in the city, I have supported residents of Adelaide City Council in their actions against proposed changes to their ward structure and borders, which would have seen the loss of ward councillors in both the North and South wards and part of North Adelaide joining the Central Ward. I'm very concerned about the government's plans for the parklands, particularly the new Riverbank Authority, which I believe adds yet another layer of bureaucracy when this Capital City Committee is well placed, after the addition of the member for Adelaide, to establish the right use of the precinct and, all, and are all answerable to the public, unlike a nominated committee member. I also have grave concerns for the Hayek Plaza, which I believe should be predominantly an open public area designed for and by the Festival Centre in consultation with Adelaide City Council and the residents of South Australia. We need a balanced approach to the protection of the parklands as they are an important state asset, along with considered activation and enhancement of underused or neglected areas of parklands. I organised a protest rally on the steps of Parliament and successfully blocked a government regulation which would have enabled the $40 million footbridge to bypass proper planning processes, which would have seen it equated to minor home improvements such as a carport and therefore not requiring planning approval. There have been many other issues resulting from the government's development plan amendments. In particular, city residents have been hit hard by changes. I have and will continue to support city residents who have been adversely affected by the changes. 
I attended and addressed a protest rally organised by the residents of the South West community in, in the city against the government's DP development plan assessment amendment that allowed building approvals using an interim provision while consultation was still ongoing, along with the introduction of catalyst sites for land over 1,500 square metres to have unrestricted use. I have also assisted prospect residents with their own actions against high-rise, submitting their petition to Parliament in addition to their fight against high-rise. I supported prospect residents that objected to the removal of ward councillors. In 2009, Mayor David O'Loughlin broke convention to use his casting vote to remove wards despite receiving 400 submissions against the change. I have supported residents and councillors to have these wards restored. This last election, I was overwhelmed by how many people were keen to ensure I retained my seat. People that were not Liberal members, and even some that had voted Labor all of their life, were keen to assist in keeping their hard-working local member. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my branch members, helpers and supporters, of whom there are too many to name individually. I'd especially like to thank my SEC campaign team for their assistance over the last term of Parliament and particularly around the election. I have been particularly impressed and amazed by the speeches given by the new members to Parliament, and I welcome all new members to this House. In particular, the members for Bright, Hartley, Mitchell, Schubert, Mount Gambia, and the Honourable Andrew McLaughlin in the other place, for their speeches that show their varied and extensive experience and passion to represent their community it's to be applauded, and I look forward to seeing them progress over the years. In, in regards to this term of parliament, you can expect that I will continue to advocate for substance over spin, continue to put my constituents first and foremost in all deliberations, and to always do my very best for the people of the Adelaide electorate whilst considering the state of the whole, as a whole. Thank you. Yeah.